You realize you're not in control of life. And just chill out. Stop trying to control everything. So this is one of the last things on my final section to share with you. This. This discussion. And that is, I, I mean personally, even though there's more elaborate descriptions and divisions made by scholars, classical scholars, uh, of sadness, uh, I would like to describe or divide, generally speaking, the emotion of sadness into three categories. There's sadness that you brought upon yourself as a result of something you've done. It's, it's your fault. And you know that. That's, that's sadness you brought upon yourself. Then there's sadness brought upon you by others. Something they said, something they did, something, you know, something they, uh, some, somehow they had an effect on you and they brought sadness upon you. And the third circumstance of sadness is a sadness that's a result of a circumstance. You can't even blame a person. It could be something like a car accident. It could be like an earthquake. It could be anything. And it could be a sickness. It could be whatever. And these kinds of, and so there are these three circumstances. In the first circumstance, the first circumstance, what was it again? What was the first circumstance? Something you've done yourself. And you're depressed about something you did. A lot of people have that. My recommendation is to you, for you to carefully study the dua made by Musa And you'll notice, as I, as I talk, you'll notice that I keep trying to illustrate to you the talk, the subject of my talk was the Qur'an's remedy for sadness. There's not one, there are thousands of remedies in the Qur'an for sadness. But I keep alluding to the fact that every time I get close to talking about a solution, what comes up? Dua. Every time I start talking about a solution, what comes up again? Dua comes up. Adam alayhi salam was sad, but did Allah give him? Allah gave him a dua. Uh, you know, you have um, Ilyas alayhi salam, extreme, you know, really did, 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 in, in, in a state of depression, sadness, and he says, I will only complain to Allah azza wa Right, so you have these prophetic situations and they all turn into du'as. Now this du'a is which prophet? When you made a mistake yourself? Musa alayhi salam. I'm sure you've done some pretty bad things, but I'm pretty sure you didn't punch a guy and he died. I, uh, don't raise your hand, please. <laughs> police here, just, just relax, okay? <laughs> they're not, they're not here, you didn't have to check. <laughs> okay. So, Musa alayhi salam has done this really bad mistake and he's now, you know, those kinds of mistakes can haunt you for life. You know, soldiers come back from the battlefield having killed innocent people and they end up committing suicide. Really, they're broken psychologically because of the atrocities they have committed. They, they, they relive those moments over and over again. When you've done something wrong, you are one of the victims. You're not just the criminal, you actually, Allah makes you suffer internally for that. You pay the price. But even if it was an honest mistake in the case of Musa alayhi salam, he is the had guilt of taking another life. It's not something easy to swallow, it doesn't leave you alone. But Allah gave him, inspired him with this beautiful dua. Rabbi inni lima anzalta ilayya min khayrin faqeer. That is actually the key to moving on with life. If you made a mistake and you don't know how to move on with life, learn from the dua of Musa alayhi salam. Master, no doubt about it, me, whatever good you send my way, I am desperately in need, my back is broken, I am not capable. Whatever good you send my way, I can use it. Let me explain what, you, what we mean by good here. Good means two things. Ya Allah, give me good opportunities in life. Ya Allah, don't let the mistake I made make the rest of my, my life a bad you know, experience. Don't give me sadness after sadness after sadness. Give me positive experiences and good opportunities in life. By the way, right after that dua, Musa Alayhi got a job in the next time. Right, he made that dua. Next time he got hired and married. One, ayah. it's pretty awesome. And 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 that next ayah starts with a fa, which means therefore, therefore the girl came, called him to the dad. He told the story. She said, "I'd like to, you know, let's hire him." And you know, the whole thing worked out. But all as a result of his dua. What we're learning that, that because that little fa in the ayah in Surah Al-Qasas is that duas can have a serious impact on your the rest of your life. Where am I going to find a job? I'm homeless. I'm a fugitive from the law. I ran away from Egypt. I don't even know my way around here. I'm just sitting by a puddle of water. You know, I don't even my shoes are torn up. My clothes are beat up. I'm sitting under a tree. I don't even know if this tree belongs to someone that kicks me out of here. Next thing, I just, yeah, Allah, send some good my way. Boom. Got a job. Married a girl. Moved in. Eight-year visa. Set. <laughs> Everything. Set. Thamaniya hijab. Really? So did the ayat. You got an eight-year visa to live in Madian. You know, housing, everything paid, covered. It was sweet. And what a, what a job interview. It was a side note, but what a job interview. He goes to the, the, guy, the girl's father and he says, I killed someone, I ran away from there, I'm homeless right now. And two minutes later he's saying, 
you should marry my daughter and you should live here. <laughs> that just proves that Allah makes things happen. You don't make the rishta happen. <laughs>